looks like. A quick question. Oh. Um, does anybody know whether uh, we fixed SprintBot and that is making the issues for these calls or not? Because the links, all the links this week are wrong. So we, we can fix um, it in the issue, but I don't know if that's a automated. It is automated. Um, I haven't gotten around to fixing it, but at the very least, if we're doing it manually, we can have the right links. So thank you for bringing that to our attention. Yay. Hey, Rob. Hello. Okay, let's begin. Hello there. My name is Portia, and welcome to the IPFS weekly call. Uh, this is a call where we um, find out all the interesting things that are happening in the IPFS community. How we usually do these calls is that we start with um, announcements, then we get into the main presentation, and we uh, finish up with Q&A. So we're looking for an agenda. Let's see. So our agenda is usually here. Ah, thank you. Thank you, Rob. And before we begin, I'd also like to thank Ali for taking notes for today. So thank you, Ali. Excellent. Um, do we have any announcements that we'd like to start off with? I have an announcement. <laughs> Let me share my screen. So um, tomorrow I am holding a contribute to open source um, IPFS day. Um, it's going to be from 6.30 to nine and it's a great chance for people to dive in into the IPFS code base and contribute. So this is the actual event. And if you are a maintainer and if you're interested in what we'll do uh, during the event, I have a brief outline of the three different tracks to contribute. Um, I've gone to contributing events before and in many cases, I was not able to actually contribute or I was at not at that level. So in order to not have that frustration for um, the people who are arriving, um, I broke this event up into three events, I mean, three tracks. So I will give a presentation of what is IPFS and what we've been doing so far. And then I will break it up into three different tracks, which is what is Git for the beginners? So this is be, I'm trying to make this as beginner friendly as possible. Um, the second track for people who aren't uh, familiar with our project, it's IPFS, how can I use it? So even for the folks who are not able to contribute, they'll be able to understand what is IPFS and uh, look at some example applications uh, that use IPFS. And for everyone else, um, I'm going to add some more links, but I have contributing to IPFS first issues, which includes contribution guidelines, and it also includes um, issues that are labeled as easy. So if you have, I mean, if you're a maintainer of uh, IPFS project and you would like some help, you can put it, file an issue here under, uh, under um, contribute to open source project IPFS, and we'll try to get some people tomorrow to look at the project and hopefully contribute and hopefully land in a commit. So that, um, that is me. Does anyone else have, yes, it's from 6.30 to 9 CET. Um, does anyone else have any announcements before we begin? If you do, uh, you raise your hand. Let's see. I don't see any raised hands. Uh, hey, Portia. My, my hey, question in the I, chat was if there's any way for people who are not physically present in Berlin to take advantage of, of all the work you're putting together to make this event happen. Um, I will. So this is the first event and we're not going to live stream. That being said, we are going to post um, the presentation of what is IPFS and such. 
and for people who are working on the JS IPFS or working on Go IPFS, if you can just like look at some of the pull requests and uh, just look it over and see if you can actually uh, commit it, that will be great. For our next events, we're trying to figure out if it would be feasible for us to actually stream the event live. Awesome. Okay, um, I see that this issue is not public, so um, I will find a place to make this issue public so that everyone can actually look at it and actually uh, put in comments and such. So thank you, Matt. Any other comments or announcements? Put this in gallery view. Any hands? No? Alrighty, thank you. And we are going to get into our main presentation from Jake, and he is going to show us some of the awesome work he's been doing with the uh, libp2p JavaScript API. So Jake, please take it away. Let's share the screen. All right. Um, yeah, so about two weeks ago, we released uh, JS libp2p 0.24, and so we're just going to kind of go over what are the major things in that release. Um, there are a lot of bug fixes and stability improvements in there as well, um, but we're going to go over the, the high-level stuff um, and see if anybody has questions. So the big things that went out with that were finally delegated peer and content routing. Um, I previously demoed that in IPFS all hands. So we won't be demoing it today, but I've got links in the presentation which we'll share out that you can go and there is a working example in JS lib P2P. So you can look at that and pull it down and play with it. We also have a uh, circuit relay has been enabled by default. Uh, lib P2P and lib P2Switch switch are now state machines. And then CAD DHT now has interop with Go for IPFS. So yay, let's talk about those. Yeah. Uh, so delegated routing, like what are we trying to accomplish with that? Because a lot of times we have the, we can use the DHT and we get a lot of this out of the box with the DHT. Um, but there are some instances where the DHT doesn't get us everything. So a couple scenarios for this are low resource nodes, nodes that are in maybe IOT devices or restricted browser space that really don't have the resources to handle maintaining a DHT. Um, this supports that or low availability nodes. This is going to be probably a very common thing with browsers where they you know, you, you turn on, you create some content, whether it's in peer pad or something like that, you create a new pad and then you close your browser down, you shut your laptop down. Now nobody is able to get that content anymore. Um, peer pad is working on like pinning services to solve that. But this also provides ways for us to, have another node provide our content. So when we register as a provider, we actually have another node come fetch our content and then serve it themselves. So this is a great thing for like the gateway nodes who everybody, a lot of people connect to that we can have leverage them as potential providers, have them pull our content. And then if we're creating content in PeerPad or something like that, we know that it's, it's servable elsewhere when we shut our laptops down. Um, and then custom routing needs. There's very likely going to be the more people start using IPFS and libp2p, they may have different needs for providing uh, content uh, and for finding peers. They may have maybe specific business needs, whatever that is. With libp2p, the delegate routers are all part of the custom peer and content routing. So people will be able to create their own for that and then supply those and we'll run through a number of them. Uh, to serve up that content. So there is an example on GitHub. I'll just pop this open real quick so you can see. Um, it is in the JS lib P2P repo. It has all the code there. Um, you can run through it, sample working. One thing to note right now, this is dependent on a uh, update to go IPFS, which is pending, uh, for it to work against a running gateway node. But it will work out of the box as long as you point it to an IPFS node that supports the endpoints. Currently, JS IPFS API doesn't support that because we don't have refs built in, and refs are what's needed to actually register another person to provide your content. So if you go and say, hey, 
provide this content for me, it has no way of automatically like going and fetching and pulling your content. Um, so there, we would need to change how that works or introduce refs to JSI PFS. Uh, the delegate modules for peer and content routing, they're already on NPM. You can go use them, pull them down. Um, yeah. Uh, circuit relay. So one of the things we noticed is we, in both Go and JSLib P2P, we weren't turning on circuit relay dialing by default. So if you didn't speak the same over the same transport as another node, um, you wouldn't be able, nobody would be able to dial to you. Even if you were connected to a relay that could translate that communication for you, nobody was turning it on by default. So we went ahead and flipped that on. One thing we didn't do is turn on hop because that registers you as a relay. So we didn't turn that on because that can provide a lot of, that can cause a lot of resource, um, resource constraints because you're relaying a bunch of communication. So typically we try to do that, reserve that for nodes who can handle that kind of throughput. It will click, maybe. I go too far. Ah. There we go. All right. Uh, state machine updates. So JS libp2p and libp2switch are all state machines now. And the reason we did that is so that we could get better flow control, um, both at the start stop layer as well as like the connection layer. So in with this update, we expose a new dial FSM method in JS libp2p. And what that does is rather than getting a like normal uh, interface connection, you actually get a state machine connection, which enables you to hook into a bunch of events. Um, they're linked here, the variety of events. It's like warning events, because we got a lot of requests for, hey, I this thing says that uh, circuit failed and nobody was able to connect to it. Um, so, and we didn't get enough errors from all of the different transport failures that could have happened. So now it will emit additional warning errors so that you can listen to those and then better diagnose what's going on and, and make better decisions about that. With that, we also introduced on the um, state machine connection, we introduced a close method because previously we didn't have a close method on um, the normal connection. And so it was kind of a, annoying for users to be able to close the connection. This makes that a lot easier. So as soon as you get that state machine, you're done with the connection, you just call close and it will shut it down and the other side will hang up and it's, it's a lot cleaner. We also improved debug logging for connections because this was, this was a big pain point for a lot of developers. So there's now a libp2b con setting that you can set um, and that will actually log out much better information. And I will just pop over, um, let me try to change my screen real quick so we can see that in action. All right. So this is just the libp 2 p chat example. So I'm just going to go ahead. Can everybody see that? Okay, let me make it a little bit bigger. and then move chat out of the way. All right, so with that, we can go ahead and just run debug. We're listening for a wild card on the libpd connections for the source listener. That will boot up. In our other window, we will do that for the dialer. And you'll see these messages spamming out. I'll go ahead and make this one window bigger. Oh no, that's not very, Okay, so we can see that we have messages here. It tells you which node it's, this node is dialing out. It's dialing to this other node. It's going over the TCP support. When it's successfully dialed, if it successfully privatized the connection, um, if it's finished crypto, which crypto it's selecting, when crypto is done, and then just every step of that process is a state machine. Anytime its state is changing, or is in process, we log that out so you can get a lot more verbose debug logging to figure out what's going on with the connections. Okay. And I will switch back. All right. 
So with that, we also, with the state machines for libp2p, uh, start and stop states are now item potent. We had issues with users where they were trying to, they wanted to know if the libp2p node was started. Uh, um, so they would have to listen or they were doing some like janky calls because of the callback stuff, which will be eliminating hopefully in the not too distant future. Um, but this solves that by, if you want to know if libp2p is started, just call start, wait for it to call back, and it will done, it'll be done. If it's already started, it will handle that for you and just say it's already done. Um, so that should make that a lot easier uh, to deal with. Yeah. Um, and then the last thing, uh, CAD DHT interop. So uh, Vashko's done a ton of work working on getting the uh, bug fixes and API improvements for CAD DHT and libp 2 p This has removed a lot of blockers also for the implementation for IPNS, which is uh, getting closer and closer. So working in JSIPFS, so awesome work, Vashko, on that. Um, and then our next step is going to be turning on the DHT by default in JSIPFS, because right now it's experimental, and hopefully very soon we'll see that as no longer experimental and just running all the time so you can get peers and content. Yay. Does anybody have questions about anything? First of all, thank you. Okay. <laughs> okay, um, if you have questions, if you could put it in the chat, that'd be great. Uh, we'll start with David. Uh, hey, yeah, awesome work. Super exciting update. Uh, thank you so much for doing this talk. Um, how, like, on your tests, uh, how is that reversal a problem when using the delegated routing? Like, uh, do you get uh, lots of success dialing to other nodes that are behind that as well today? Or Yeah, so ultimately when you're doing delegate routing, the first thing you do is you're bootstrapping to, you bootstrap to a single node, so typically this is a gateway node. So this is something that is, it's still a problem with that traversal, but this is, it's, a lot more specific so that if you're in an environment where you can at least control your port mappings, you can delegate, hey, I'm going to be dialing out to this gateway node and I'm going to be doing an HTTP API request to that node. Um, that the advantage there is as long as you're able to talk to that one node, you don't have to worry about talking to the rest of the network because you're registering it as your provider um, and fetching content from it. Does that mm -hmm. answer your question? Uh, not necessarily. My, my question was specifically after you do the, the content routing, right? Like you get a list of peers and those peers probably are on other people's desktops. So now your desktop has to dial to the other desktop, right? And that's like where the net traversal problem really hits. Uh, and, and my question is, uh, is there any tests to see like the, the level of connectivity from a, a node on JSAPFS to the rest of the network? Uh, does it, use like TCP whole punching? Does it default to circuit relay all the time? Uh, is, is there any like work yeah. done? So we don't have TCP hole punching in jslip 2 p yet. Um, that's one of the things that we want to look at getting added in the near future. Um, circuit relay was a big thing that we wanted to make sure was on by default to help with a lot of that. Um, because that is a huge problem, being able to deal with that. Um, we also have the NAT Manager work, which we're gonna to try to be working on for early next year uh, to help get around, um, help with some of that TCP um, hole punching. Um, yeah. Another great opportunity there for the, like avoiding circular relay is by like, just checking in on UTP. Like uh, it seems like UTP got a lot of updates recently and then probably has the bugs fixed that we needed. Um, and like UTP already has hole punching by design. And so, and, and it's UTP underneath. So it, it makes things simpler, S some, something worth checking out. Okay, I'll, I'll not steal more time. There's like 3000 questions for you. <laughs> okay, awesome. Um, Matt? I have two questions. One is just a request for clarification. When you say libp2p is a state machine, could you define what you mean by that? Um, but then my question is, um, is around delegated routing. Uh, you, the way you described it, it sounded like the, the node that you're delegating to is actually holding on to that content for some amount of time. Is that true? Or is it just repeating your provide statements and providing routing to you as a node? 
Yeah, so uh, I'll answer <coughs> in reverse order. Um, so for the uh, delegate routing, when you provide content and you make that call, that HTTP call out to your delegate node, say, hey, I want to provide this content. That node will then con come back and it fetches the content from you and becomes a provider. And then it registers as a provider for that content. So once that transaction has happened, you could shut down and never turn your node on again, but you, that content will exist on the network. Well, so then my confusion there is that then it's basically providing a like pinning service. So then yeah. is there, is that, I guess my confusion is, is it's almost, even though it's a libp 2 p feature, it's almost more like an IPFS pinning service feature, like, cause you're providing this. Yeah. So this isn't, yeah, this is very it? dependent on IPFS. So right. it's, it's like a, a routing plugin for IPFS that plugs into libp 2 p So, and this is why we introduced like the custom routing because there are probably um, specific libp 2 p use cases for people that aren't using IPFS where they might want to build their own solution around that. And then they would be able to go and create their own content peer, peer routers for that. Okay. Yeah, and the other one was just like, just for people who don't know what a state machine is, like, like simple definition of what do you mean by that? Yeah, so one of the things that we ran into with uh, JSLib PDP for a while, and even some stuff with, with JSIPFS is like transition of states and controlling what, what state connections were in when they were dialing. Um, and so a, what the state machine allows us to do is it allows us to initiate transitions. And so we can go in and we can say, hey, libp2p node, I want you to start. And then depending on what state that node is currently in, we'll determine the action of it. So if it's stopped, it will move into a starting, it will transition into starting, and then it will do a bunch of actions. And once that's complete, it transitions to started. And so if you call start on it again, and this is the item potent thing of, if you continue to call libp2p.start, if it's already started, it says, yep, I'm started, I'm done you can go on with it and the same thing for stopping and what this allowed us to do implementing it in the connection is we actually had a fun uh issue in jslib p2p where the we didn't enforce encryption on incoming connections so when it came in if the node didn't negotiate and say okay i want sec io um, we wouldn't enforce that it's so now it can actually go in and say no i'm going to forcefully go through that state like i've dialed we've successfully dialed now i'm moving into the crypto phase and if you try to use a different protocol that's not in the crypto protocols it will fail the connection out okay alan next question hi uh, yeah uh, on relay and hops um if i wanted to run a lib p2p node as a relay um, can I configure which nodes that I'm going to relay for? Is there a way to do that? Not currently. Currently, that's just a global that you're just registering as a, as a global relay. Relay for everyone. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Relay for the greater good. Yeah. Uh, Johnny Crunch. <laughs> Next question. Yeah, actually, I had uh, three questions. One is uh, for the states, are you using IPLD? No, so what we're doing is we're just using a library called FSM events, um, okay. and it just helps manage our state transition internally. So that's JSON? Yeah. Um, I think David probably mentioned a UDP uh, support. Uh, we don't have UDP support yet. I think there is a transport somewhere um, that's been kind of dead for a while, uh, but I think that's one of our upcoming priorities. Um, I think that might be in our, our roadmap discussion uh, for next year is getting that UDP support. In. And lastly, uh, which crypto algorithms do you support? So currently, uh, are you talking about for keys? Like or us, I imagine definitely RSA, IO. but what about ED25519 or SECP256K1? So that is coming. Uh, we have, I've got a pure, uh, a pull request open for uh, the ED25519 keys. Um, the only issue there is libp, the, the keychain, which we use mostly in uh, JSIPFS, that 
currently ex needs to export the keys to save them into the keychain. And the only key that has export support right now is RSA. So I just need to go fix that. Uh, but my goal is to have support for that release by the end of the year. Cool. All right. All right. Alan, and last question goes to David. So Alan, do you have a okay. question? Yeah, yeah, sorry. Uh, I'm terrible at the mute button. What, uh, does, is is JSLibP to P using dial FSM by default now? So yes, it, anytime you call, we actually like melded a lot of the logic. So if you call dial, dial will actually in turn call dial protocol, uh, which in turn calls, is that right? Dial FSM? It might not yet actually, it might be lying. I would need to look at that. Um, but the goal is to turn that all in and like when we move to the uh, async iterator work, uh, which hopefully we'll have um, some open proposals for that soon that we'll just move all of that logic into that to just simplify that API. And last question, David. Uh, so it's not necessarily a question, it's just like uh, two quick points for clarification. Uh, by the way, Open Bazaar is happy to hear that about the new keys <laughs> added support. So that's for that. Uh, I know that our other groups are also excited. So like in terms of like clarification, um, so two things. Uh, we will not directly support UDP as a transport for Leap Peer to Peer. And that's because like Leap Peer to Peer design assumes a lot of like stream based protocols. Um, and so you have to have some kind of notion of um, just like a circuit in a stream so so that like all the crypto that we do on top all the providing etc works we do have a side quest uh of like enabling packet switching on on only peer-to-peer -peer. um and there's a lot of work especially like done by Lars and others uh, and when we get there then we will have a udp what we can have today is UTP, and I know like these three letter acronyms with very, like with pretty much like the same letters, just confuse everyone. But like UTP is the transfer developed by the BinTorrent group for BitTorrent that is on top of UDP, but adds the, 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 the stream flavor that a thing like vp 2 peer needs. So you can get the benefits of UDP, like it's going to be on a UDP port, you can get the hole punching, et cetera, but like it has the properties uh, that you need to to actually use it. Um, hope that was uh, useful information. The other clarification is people were asking about the difference between content routing and preloading nodes. Um, just like a very quick distinction. So in a leap peer to peer, till today we have this concept of like records and be a, uh, a name record for IPNS can be a provider's record for the DHT for like saying that like you store some file. And those things are like, a, they don't have a structure. There is the plan to move them into a PLD land, but they are not yet. And, and that's the thing that gets used by content routing. So like when I'm asking another node to provide a file, uh, or when I'm, when I'm adding a file to the APFS network, I'm going to do a provide query. And so I'm going to tell other nodes in the network that I have this file. And that, that is about putting provided records out there. Uh, that, that's, what goes into this like delegated routing scheme. It doesn't move the file to the other nodes. Like you still hold the file. Um, then there is another concept on IPFS land, which is preloading. And preloading is when I am adding or fetching files from the network, I can use some preload nodes, which are like nodes running on beefy machines with a lot of storage and a lot of bandwidth uh, and with more CPU, RAM, etc to fetch this file from me. So that like when I'm fetching it from a low power device or a constrained runtime, like a browser, you can have nodes that take the responsibility of just like assembling all the pieces so that they can then like stream the file faster to you. It's not necessarily for the pool operation, but like it's something that just makes the experience a lot faster. Like the perceived speed increases dramatically. Um, and, but like these concepts are different. Uh, like when you do a provide in lip to peer land, you are not sending the file anywhere. Just, just, I just want to make sure like we, we are, uh, like that this, this information was here for everyone. Uh, and I hope it was helpful. Any questions? Um, maybe Jacob, if you have any, any extra points to add, um, go for it. Do the people that ask the question on IRC now make, like, does it make more sense? Um, I'm going to put the okay. video up later. And if anyone has any questions after the presentation, they can put the questions uh, below the video. 
Um, we are going to conclude the IPFS weekly call. Thank you very much, Jake. Thank you very much for your presentation. And, oh. <laughs> and I hope to see everyone next week. Have a good week. Bye bye. All right. Thank you all. Thank you for the awesome presentation. You. Awesome work. <laughs> <laughs>